Today I have an SAT math tip and trick that can be applied to the math no calculator and the math with calculator sections that deals with exponents with the same base being divided and multiplied as well as having an exponent raised to a power and then that raised to a power as well. I'll explain all three of those rules in today's video and this is going to be um, applicable to question 11 from SAT practice test 7. I'm going to use this question to illustrate um, the rule for math in doing this. So I take a look at this equation. I have the expression x to the power of negative 2 times y to the power of 1 half all divided by the quantity the x to the power of 1 third times y to the power of negative 1, where x is greater than 1 and y is greater than 1. Um, it's equivalent to which of the following below. Okay, so in order to solve this, if you have exponents with the same base, so in this case I have x, that's the same base, and they're each raised to a power and you're dividing them, what that means is you're going to subtract. So in this case you're going to have x to the negative 2, okay, and then you're just going to subtract that 1 third from it since you're dividing them. So you're going to end up with then x to the negative 2 and 1 third. Okay, you could rewrite that then as x to the negative 7 over 3. Now what you can do then is just find which denominator, right, and obviously since this is simplified, if you have a negative exponent, so in this case x to the negative 7 over 3, that's the same as 1 over x to the 7, 3 in the denominator. That's what that negative sign means, so that's another thing that you should know. So now I know that my x has to be in my denominator, I see that that's true in a, b, c, and d. So I can't get rid of anything just based on that, but when I look at x being to the power of 7 thirds in my denominator, I see that I only have that in option d, right? We have x squared, which is the same as x to the uh, 6 thirds, and then we have the third root of x, which is the same as x to the 1 third, right? So x to the 6 thirds, and then we have x to the 1 thirds. Okay, and we know that that obviously, since we're multiplying, that means we're adding, and obviously that gets us x to the 7 thirds, okay, which is obviously the same thing that we got when we divide it. So we know our answer there is going to have to be d. Now we can go ahead and do y just for practice, although we would not need to solve for y in this situation because we know that x is correct, right? So we wouldn't even have to solve for y if we were taking this as a real SAT, unless we just wanted to check our work. But obviously just based on x, we know d is the correct answer because if we look at our denominators in a, b, and in c, none of them have x to the seventh third in the denominator. So d would have to be our answer. But we can go ahead and do y just for practice. So we have y to the one half. Obviously we're going to have to subtract this negative one. So we're going to have y to the one half and we got to subtract then uh, negative 1 from it. So subtracting negative 1, we see that negative, um, a minus a negative is obviously going to give us a plus positive. So we're going to have then y to the 1 half, and then we're adding 1 to that. That's going to give us y to the 3 halves. Okay, y to the 3 halves. We go down, take a look at d. Obviously, we see d has y to the 3 halves because y to the 3 halves is equal to y times the square root of y because obviously that's y to the 1, and then times the square root of y, which is obviously y to the 1 half. You add those, you get y to the 3 over 2 power. Now one thing I want to add here is just that if you were to multiply um, a something with the same base, let's say that we had x um, to the third power, right? And we're not multiplying here, we're actually raising to a power. And let's say we're raising that to the second power. You're just going to multiply those two. So then you'd end up with x to the 6. Let's say we had x to the, I'll go fourth power. Okay, and let's say we raised it to the third power. Then you're going to end up with x to the 12th. So that's just one thing to note here as far as explaining the rules with exponents with the same base. Now, one thing that could trip you up is if you forget to have the same base. Okay, in order to use these rules of subtracting when dividing and adding when multiplying and multiplying your exponents to, by each other when you're raising something to that power, you're going to want to have that same base, right? Or for this one right here, I'll go ahead and box it. Obviously, there's no same base because you're just raising something to a power and then to another power. Um, but with the multiplying and dividing rule and the adding and subtracting, you're going to want to make sure you have the same base because you have to have the same base for that to be applicable. So hopefully this video was helpful. If it was, make sure to like, share, and subscribe. And as always, have a great day.